Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Planet Nomads. And you know, I've been thinking about this. Uh, the new lab compound here has got a lot of room, and it's looking awfully empty. And even then, that big helicopter I built, it does really take up a lot of space. And one of the things I've been missing around here is the, is the tank. And yes, I remember to change the sign this time. Uh, if you haven't seen the tank, I'll show you that right now. So here we are, back in my old survival world. Uh, this is the tank here, that's the old lab. Uh, I'll bring, talk about that in a minute here. Uh, but this is the original tank I built. I ended up coming up with a design for the, with the hover pads for a rail gun, which actually files, fires a projectile out of this cannon. I think this one was measured about 200 kilometers an hour. And the way you figure that out is I stick a solar beacon on the end of the, end of the projectile, and when I fire it out of the cannon, I go through, the, go back over the recording. Sorry about this. I'm a little short of breath right now. Uh, but yeah, you go back to the recording, and I check the distance on the beacon up in the compass to the top there, as it's entering out of the barrel. So it'd be like seven meters or ten meters or whatever. And then I'd wait till the second update or something. It updates like every second or second and a half the actual distance. So and then it'll be like three seconds, and I'll get the second update of let's say 200 meters. So 200 meters. In three seconds, works out to like 65 meters per second. There's 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. So you take 65 to times that by 60, 3600, which gives you somewhere around 200. I'm not gonna really go through the math, but it's gonna be like 200, yeah, 200,000 meters or something in an hour. So that's like 200 kilometers an hour. So that's uh, something that is interesting. Now one of the things I've been wanting to test is, I think it was one of these test models I had set up over here. I had made the barrel a little longer, and I did actually use this for the pinball table. I'm pretty sure I was launching those balls out of there pretty fast. But I think technically the longer the barrel, the long faster it should go. So the next tank design is going to be bigger. It's going to be looking more like a tank. It's going to be a bigger design. I'm gonna try to get the wheels looking a little more like tank treads. I won't have the treads, but yeah, I'll make it a little bigger and then I'll be able to actually redesign this whole, I gotta be careful my jetpack fuel here. I'm not used to being in survival anymore. But with the air blades, I'm gonna be able to get rid of this platform here because I'll just stick the air blades on the side and I'll be able to actually have full control of the entire top section of the tank without having to switch the generators on and off. I'll have the Hopefully the planetary setup on, let's say hover pads with, with the hover pads with directional using the wheels for rotation, sort of in this locked position. Hopefully it's going to be enough, and I'll be able to use control and space to lift the turret up and down and left and right to fire. I have made a new loading mechanism for this. So I've decided to go with uh, two wheel bearings and oh, what you call it and the hover pad at the end. Set to grounded mode, so when I hop in the cockpit, it'll automatically load it into the ca into the barrel and I get a fire, so more or less I have to line up my shot first, then load it and fire it, but that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, if you've never built anything with multiple, I guess you'd call them functional blocks, like the rotating plate there, I do ha technically have a hinge in here somewhere can't remember where I've stuck the thing. Oh, right there. I put that in the wrong spot. That's actually going to go on the top next time. But if you ever want to work on something like this, and I've seen a few people have, uh, new people anyways, get a little surprised about this. Uh, whenever you work on any type of vehicle, for one, you got to plant it. And the best way to plant it, yeah, depending on how big the vehicle is. In this case, I need to use like the short inner wall, but if you can use a jack, you can use a jack if you want. don't have to complete it. It just has to touch the touch the ground and snap to the actual vehicle and then you can safely work on this section if I wanted to work on let's say where the planetary is I would have to actually when we call it planting actually plant that to the ground and then same with the the gun if you don't then you have serious problems and you can look back through half my videos before episode 70 or something I'm sure you'd see a lot of interesting things uh, if, if you didn't see the gyro incident, I actually tried to make a big sort of Orbitron gyro thing up on top of the lab there. 
but I didn't actually plant each individual ring. I was using jacks to sort of plant them to each other, and I think that's why it, when I started digging the jacks out, it actually fell apart, and I think that's was half the issue. But anyways, and at the same time, too, the switchboard's going to make it a little easier for turn, just going from the drive to the firing mechanism. But anyways, let's go back to the lab, and I'll show you the new loading setup. Okay, and here we are. Now, I've been choosing this, but I decided to come, sorry, I tried to come up with this setup here to make it a little easier to actually load the thing. Uh, one of the biggest problems is the post like to try to, like to snap to these wheels, so it kind of makes it kind of hard to place. So, if it's outside, just on top of these wheels, it doesn't have to worry about the side wheels or the top wheel from actually touching. So, I'll just show you how we do this. Uh, this is actually set to, that's the wrong button, set to ground it, uh, grounded, so when I hop in the cockpit, it'll automatically push the rail on the pad, uh, bearings, into the chamber, and then I have these two hover pads here. Uh, as you can see, these are set to directional, they'll feed those through these rollers here, so it's aligned straight in this chamber, and then these are all on directional. So then as long as I hold forward, it's going to add momentum. Now, I'm planning on, the old one was, you see there's, I think it was only six sets long, this is four, I might try to go a little bit bigger, try to go like 12 on this one, just make it really good, but let's do a quick test fire here so you can see how it goes, if you haven't actually seen it yet, but I'm sure everybody's seen it by now, I am the, the gun guy, oh, come on, there we go, as you can see that's what it likes to do, it likes to snap funny, but this seems to snap pretty good for me. So far I haven't had any issues. Usually get it within a couple of seconds before I'd spend two minutes sometimes trying to load the barrel on that gun. Uh, I will definitely have to find a better spot to set that up. I've noticed the hover pads tend to have more push at this section, the side opposite the connection point, than down here. Even though they do have a technically a two block area of effect. Anyways, we hop in here and as you can see the hover pad pushes it in and then we fire it out. Just like that. And that actually, it's actually been going pretty straight. Oh, and there goes that. So anyways, that is the new tank design. It's going to be a fairly long barrel, but it's going to be an extremely big tank. And it's going to be a fun build. So, let us begin.
And here we are. So, hopefully, hopefully we don't have any freakouts when I start unplanting this thing. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Oh, I'm stupid. I, I meant to put that ring on the inside. Uh, yeah, I think we have time to do that because I had the spacing set up to do that. So let me change this really quick here. Oh, okay, that's better. I just had to move this back one more because it was supposed to be... Uh, the hover pad was supposed to be on the fifth block from the rotor and I had it on the sixth because I had it planted there. But anyways, I'll give you a quick tour of what's going on. Oh, I forgot a few blocks here. Might as well fill these in. I didn't even see that. Let's see here. There we go. Sometimes we get confused. But as you can see, I have everything planted. Uh, each individual section, I have the, the tank main body on the... I'm going to call it on the jack. I got the plants down there. I have the planetary planted, and I have the gun planted. Uh, I made myself a little staging platform here, and I should actually be able to build the rail in here. Uh, as you can see, we'll go ahead and take a number four. Go to the platform, place that right there. I can place my first post there. And then I should be able to get my second post right in here somewhere. So that is good. Uh, I do have separate controls. Uh, let's get out of build vision so you can actually see this. This is for the engines. That turns the wheels on. Turn that off. And then we turn this on. And this turns on the gun. Uh, the pusher. We we'll call it the ramrod because it's actually pushing the projectile into the rod. We have the lifters here, and I'm using uh, the hover mode on the air blades, which should be enough to at least lift this because I do have a bit of a counterweight at the back. And that's just to get our uh, angle of trajectory. Uh, I have the hover pads underneath here, which you can't see, set to directional, so that's left and right. So then I use left and right, and we turn left, and we turn right. And then, of course, we have fire for, uh, forward for space. And I'll be able to show you that in a few moments. Uh, I have done a, done a backup save just in case things go horribly wrong here. So the first thing we're going to take apart, or I'm actually going to shut everything off first. It'd be nice if it gave a little bit more range on that. Like that's about all you get. With you get the config menu, you can reach from like here. So now let's see if the physics behave. So far, so good. Let's get that stupid gun out of the way. I don't even know why they give you a gun in creative. You should be able to just right-click on stuff and, and destroy it. So that is the gun. Now for the planetary. She's good. Now, if you didn't watch the gun build, uh, the original tank build, it was 67, episode 67, I originally built it and I did more work on 69 through 71 but what I've done here is I'm using the hover pads to create to actually turn the planetary I have the wheels fixed at a 90 degree instead of having them in the center I have them in the corners and that's just to create the drag and the resistance so the barrel doesn't move as much when I'm driving around because it's front heavy so it's going to want to swing back and forth if I have the wheels where the hover pads are then I'll be more free to move at least here it's sort of locks them in a position because it has to rotate on the center so basically using friction to hold it in place and so that is that now it's all that's left is to drop it to the ground can't wait to see this thing can't wait to fire it all right and That's really tight suspension. Let's go for a drive, shall we? So, we go ahead and turn the engines on. Uh, what's going on here? I do not have power. Or I'm still stuck on something, I'm still planted somewhere. Or are they actually touching the blocks? I don't think that's it. 
Ah, torque. It's a heavy, it's a heavy beast. All right, uh, yeah, give me a second. All right, they're all set to torque, so let's see what happens now. Let's see if we can actually get this thing to move. Oh, and I missed. Getting a little bit of lag. There we go. Now it moves. And it moves like a tank. Mm. Slow and laggy. Oh, this is bad. Probably should have put the cockpit up a little bit higher. Well, let's bring it right onto the middle here and let's take her for a few test shots. Oh my god, it's so laggy here. Alright, so we get out. Turn the engines off. Turn the gun on. Uh, yes, we have to actually get our angle first before we before we fire it. So to lift the gun up, I should hold space. And that's not working. It's not enough. It is not enough. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I guess uh, let me try to plant this and add a few more blades onto it. Okay, I just put another six on there, so let's see if this can be enough to actually lift it. It doesn't have to lift it all the way, it just has to be enough. Okay, good, I had the right one. So, there we go. That's exactly what I wanted. So we can get our angle, and we can actually get quite the steep trajectory on this one. And then, of course, we... Yeah, I gotta loosen up the suspension on those wheels just a little bit. As I set the suspension to medium on these ones in here. So let's see if I can change this. Gotta get in the build mode here. If I can reach it. Okay, so I just gotta switch these down to, to medium. I'm pretty sure the hover pads do have enough to do it. That's not what I want. There we go. And then let's go do the other two sides, and then hopefully this should be enough. Now the only thing I'd be concerned about is actually trying to load this thing now. Okay, and then one more. This should be enough. On the other tank, I actually had this set to, to high pressure. So let's see what happens. Other than an obscene amount of frame, le frame lag. So there you go. Now you can see it's actually turning, but what you don't see, I don't think you can see, is it's actually dragging the wheels. You can sort of see the wheel skipping there. So it's basically forcing the wheel to turn. Now hopefully I made this strong enough, or small enough to actually rotate all the way around without the wheels coming off. And that was my biggest concern. But, I think... Let's see if we can actually get a shot over to the helicopter. Just because we can't actually destroy anything yet. Oh, I'm actually impressed with this. And it didn't want to move there for a second. In fact, what we'll do is, uh, I should have enough juice. I put three reactors on here. So it should be enough to control everything. But now, as you can see, as I'm driving, because I've got the steering backwards on the planetary, it's actually going the other way. So we go back in here, and because you can see my wheels there turning right, even though this thing's going left. So let's line this up. I have absolutely no idea how fast this thing's going to go either. 
All right, let's, uh, let's bring it down a little bit. All right, time to load. So I'm getting the first person. It's a little easier to do it this way. And then it's just a matter of placing a block here if I can. I didn't think about trying to load this while I've got it up in the air like this. Um, well, we're going to have to do it this way. Okay, like that. Stick a... Uh, come on. Right, loading's still a pain, but at least we have hover mode now, so it's easier to get at that those awkward angles. Come on. Always been the biggest drawback with this thing is trying to load it. Let's see if I can get it in here. If I was smart I would have made my staging area actually part of this. Also, I've been trying to figure out like a magazine option to auto load this thing. <sighs> I'll get it. Hang on. All right, I got it. It just happens to be one of those one of those loading positions where you have to be in an awkward position to do it. Anyway, let's get out of build mode here and. Uh, Let's take this thing for a test fire. I actually gotta take that block out now that I remember it. Now that I remember. It's just gonna be, let's get that gun out of my face. And make sure I'm taking out the right block. So, let's, uh, I should've put a beacon on this thing. Anyway, let's go for a fire. I think I actually hit the helicopter. Wow. All right, let's load it up again. Give me a moment, I'm gonna throw a beacon on it. We'll see what kind of speed we got out of this. Okay, I have another one in. I do have a solar beacon on this this one this time. And I'm actually gonna check to see not only how far it goes, but how fast it goes. And I gotta remember to take this block out. So let me get back in the first person here. Put hover mode on so I could actually get this. I should have left this whole side open so it would have been a little easier. But now we are ready. So I'm gonna fire this and I'm gonna head back into the, the editing room and find out exactly how fast we were going. So let's go ahead and fire. Let's see how far we're getting. 700 meters before it hit the ground. Wow. I'll be right back. All right, so I went over the last clip there, and apparently it went about 300, 300 meters in about three seconds, which is 100 meters a second, so 360 kilometers an hour, give or take, which is an improvement. Last t test I did was 250, but now we're at 360. I'll take a screenshot because it looks so pretty up there. Uh, I was actually thinking about throwing a beacon on there, having uh, the beam face out, sort of like a targeting laser, but it, laser, but it doesn't really matter because it's going to lob anyways, but still, 700 meters, and the fact that I have such a great choice of angle now, I don't have this huge deck sitting out the end there, I was actually thinking about putting a hot tub because I had such a big deck out there. But anyways, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave me a like, and I'll see you next time in the lab. Later.